really enjoy being outdoors, uh, even even when it's hot. Here in the lower Alabama, close to the, the lower coast, things are beginning to take on a late summer, early autumn look, and there's, there's a few things out here that I'd like to show you. Take a walk with me. This is American Beautyberry, and uh, this is one of my one of my really nice outdoor friends, especially when the mosquitoes are bothering me. You can take these leaves and crush them up and rub them on your skin, and whatever it is in there, uh, in that leaf, acts as a natural insect repellent. Mosquitoes do not like it uh, in the least, and. Uh, some of the uh, information I've been reading uh, on these berries is that they're discovering that that same compound that's in the leaf is also in the berry and uh, processed in a particular way that compound is uh, according to these studies as effective as DEET in repelling mosquitoes and ticks and that's good to know. This is another nice one. People think it's just old invasive weed, goldenrod. Goldenrod has some medicinal properties to it when you use it as a tea or uh, turn it into a tincture. And one of the things that I've, I like about the goldenrod, it's one of my season indicators. And I've been watching it uh, for a good many years now, uh, 25, 30, uh, ever since an uh, individual told me about the goldenrod and explained to me that when the goldenrod blooms, go to the calendar and mar mark off weeks six, seven, and eight, and sometime during that period of time, there's going to be a frost. And folks, I've been... I've been playing with that all this while, not just here in lower Alabama, but out on the uh, northwest Kansas prairie, uh, also in New Jersey. And so far in all these years, it's never failed. And now that frost may not be an absolute white frost. It may not be a, a killing frost. It may be something just ever so slight up on the rooftops. But in all these years, it's always frosted uh, in that period of time. Here's another example of something. It goes by a number of different names. The the small leaf thing in the back in the background. This is this is privet. Privet is toxic. But growing here with the privet, on the privet. And up into the trees all around me is greenbrier. Uh, has a number of names: greenbrier, catbrier, bullbrier. Uh, here's a nice little stem end from the greenbrier. Here's another example of the stem end from the greenbrier. Bear with me, I'm gonna move a little bit over here to this pine tree and this is gonna be a little fast and shaky. Where'd it go? Next tree, there it is. Those thorns will eat you up when they get, uh, when they harden up. There's a nice stem end. So let's talk about that greenbrier for just a minute. Uh, 
it's a it's a great plant as a wild edible. Uh, the deer love it. Uh, if you're ever in the walking in the woods and uh, pursuing uh, deer meat, uh, and you come you come along the green briar, you'll notice the the ends of it, the stem ends have been nipped off. The deer are grazing on it, and uh, it's a, a good indication that there has been deer in the in the area, and if it's a fresh nip, then they're, they're still around pretty close. But the, uh, the stem ends, the tendrils, and the roots, the root of the, the green briar, some, the, some of them make a big gnarly root mass that's the size of a bushel basket and uh, others uh, have a, a smaller root, but you can process that root and has a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of starch and that sort of thing in it. But the, the, uh, the younger leaves are, are tasty. Once they get older, they get kind of bitter, um, tough, hard to chew. Uh, but the, the young tender leaves, the tendrils and the stem ends are, uh, uh, make a really nice uh, edible. And uh, bon appetit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. That's kind of tasty. <laughs>